Hey everybody, it's Michael from Wahoo Comics here with another comic investing video where I share some investing tips and then show off some books at the end that demonstrate those tips in action. And so today we're going to be talking about the concept of total cost and why it matters and how you can lower yours when you're looking to buy comic books. So first of all, what is total cost? Well, total cost is simply the sum of all the expenses that you have to pay to acquire an asset such as a comic book. And as an investor, it's really important to determine the total cost of an asset before you buy it, because often we can lock into thinking about only one of the expenses that comes from acquiring that comic book or asset while neglecting other expenses such as different types of fees that can affect whether or not we're actually buying it at a good value. And there was a meme that I saw years ago that really illustrates uh, that concept in action. So in this meme, you, know, you might have seen the Drake meme, you know, where there's one picture on top and one on the bottom. Um, the, in the top image, uh, Drake sees uh, something he's looking to buy and it says $25 plus five dollars shipping and he's like Ugh. and then in the bottom image it he's looking at the same product and it says thirty dollars plus free shipping and he's like oh yeah that's the one I want now of course what makes that theme funny is because we all know well the total cost is the same in both of those situations he's totally paying thirty dollars uh, whether it's with free shipping or not, the cost is the same. Uh, but in Drake's mind, uh, getting that free shipping, that's the expense that he's focused on, is such a great deal, even though we know there's no real deal at all. And we can fall in that same trap, though, of looking at certain expenses and think we're getting a deal when we're not. And especially, you know, people are good at marketing, and using terms like free shipping or no hidden fees and we get captured by those words and we think oh man I'm getting some kind of fantastic deal when it's not always true and so when it comes to buying comics we have to make sure that we're not falling into the trap of getting zoned in uh, too much on one expense while ignoring the others you know, kind of a similar example in real life to the, the Drake meme. I was once selling a comic book on eBay, and I had it listed for like $100. And uh, there was a watcher, and you know, on eBay, if someone watches your listing, you can send them an offer. And so I sent him an offer for like $90 probably. And then he replied back in a message. He said, well, what if I pay you $95, but you give me free sh shipping? And I was like, oh, okay, sure, you know, what's, what's the difference? Uh, either way, the total cost is going to be the same, but for him, he just got locked into getting the, the, the free uh, shipping. Uh, but the, the mistake I see people buying comic books most frequently make is getting too locked into the sales price without considering other fees. And so, for example, I know of people who've gone into their LCS and maybe seen a comic priced at $13, and they're close to pulling the trigger, but ultimately say, well, you know, I can't do the 13 And then they'll go back home, and they'll be looking on eBay, and they see it for 10 And they think, oh, man, it was 13 at the LCS. I almost bought it there. I can get it for 10 on eBay. Boom, buy it now. <laughs> Well, of course, they bought it for $10 sale price, but they're going to have to pay the $5 or so in shipping. And so the total cost ends up even being greater than it would have been if they bought uh, the book in the LCS. Uh, another way this can happen, uh, you, there might be a book that you see on eBay, we'll say, yeah, for $10 again. And you really believe, you know, next year, oh man, yeah, I'm going to be able to sell this book for $20. I know this character is going to have maybe a minor role in you know, some Disney Plus show. And so I'm going to get it because I know I'm going to buy it now for 10 sell it for 20 And man, I am doubling my money. 
I'm getting a hundred percent return on investment, and that feels like winning, right? You know, I doubled my money. But of course, the problem with that example is that you pay that ten dollars, uh, but then you pay that five dollars shipping, and then two or three dollars in sales tax, and all of a sudden, you're not really paying ten dollars for that comic book, but you're paying eighteen dollars for it. And so then, when you go to sell it the next year for twenty dollars. Your return on investment goes all the way down from what you thought was going to be 100% to 11%. And when it comes to buying and selling comic books, 11% isn't that great because you have to spend a lot of time listing and uh, taking pictures and all this kind of stuff. You know, if you're in the, you know, if you have a mutual fund and you're making that, that's great because you're not investing time. You just you know buy it and let it sit. And if you're only going to be making that kind of percentage, then that's probably what you should do. If you're trying to buy and sell comic books, then you should be looking for a greater investment, return on investment in exchange uh, for your time. Uh, and if you know, again, if you don't determine total costs, you're not going to get nearly the return on investment that you thought you were. And that doesn't even include, like if you sell on eBay, there's obviously then cost at selling, and, and again, the time cost. And so, I'm going to show an example of a book where I recently learned my own lesson when it comes to total costs. Uh, because up until this book, every kind of big book that I've ever bought was from a personal collector. I've never uh, bought a, a, a book off of eBay or uh, anywhere else like that. Uh, you know, I looked for personal collectors for a number of reasons that, that I'll get to. And again, that takes time, so you've got to be willing to, to take the time. Uh, but I went to an auction house, and I found a book that I've been hunting for. And it's this one. Fantastic Four, number 94, which contains the first appearance of Agatha Harkness. And as you might know, this character is slated to have her own uh, Disney Plus show, uh, probably sometime next year or in 2024, because of how popular she was in the WandaVision show. And so this book really got hot during WandaVision because Katherine Hahn really knocked the role out of the park. Uh, but it's really dipped now, and I expect it, though, to explode once the show comes out and really surpass even what it went for at its peak during WandaVision. And so I wanted to pick up a copy now while it's on what I think is a dip uh, in anticipation a year or two years from now being able to sell it at, at quite a profit. And uh, so I, I've been hunting around for a personal collector that had their, a copy uh, but just wasn't having any luck. So I decided finally that I was going to go to an auction house and put a bid on, on a comic. And uh, so I was actually targeting a, a 6.0 and it went just past my entry point. If you saw my last video I talked about entry points and so and I'm not getting it, but this book, this auction was ending at the same time, and it was only a few dollars more for a half a grade higher, and so I put a bid in on it, and obviously I won it. And I was super excited because the, the sales price was well below what this book is already selling for on eBay. So in my mind, I was like, well, I'll get this book, and then you know, if I need the money, I can just sell it on eBay because I don't think it's going to dip much more and, and basically you know, get my money back with, with just a little bit, but with the plan that I'm hoping to hold on to it for a year or so and then sell it at, at, at quite, a, quite a profit. <laughs> well, again, I never bought off an auction house, so I didn't consider the total cost. And especially, I didn't consider the sales tax on buying a big book like this because when you're buying from private collectors, of course, you're not paying a sales tax. You know, if you reach out to me and just say, hey, can I buy a book from you? Not through eBay, you're just like, hey, you got this book, can I get it? And I'm like, sure, I'll send it to you, you know, pay me, whatever. And I'm not gonna charge any kind of sales tax because I'm not in kind of, you know, real business or whatever. And, uh, and I didn't consider that, I don't know why, but didn't even think that that didn't even think about that when it came to buying this book. And so again, when you're buying a valuable book, <laughs> there, there could be quite a bit of sales tax. 
Uh, and as well, buying from the auction house, uh, they asked more for shipping and handling than I was accustomed to paying. Part of because I'm sure they insured it you know, really well and all this kind of stuff, but both of those costs, expenses added quite a bit to the total cost. And so I thought that I was already making a profit on this book. I went to eBay, but basically, you know, I'll probably be ba breaking even uh, if I were to sell it now because of the fees that I'll have to pay if I sell it on eBay. And uh, so I still got it at a, at a good deal, uh, but it wasn't the great deal that I thought I'd gotten, uh, again, because I didn't consider uh, total cost. So I'm still learning, uh, and uh, that was a new experience for me. And, uh, and now I'm gonna share some other tips about how to lower your total costs. First of all, obviously, kind of what I've mentioned, uh, yeah, even though it takes a little bit more time, if you look around for private collectors selling their books, uh, then you can avoid sales tax uh, you can avoid uh, you know, other fees uh, like that uh, you know, if you buy from private collectors. Also, if you're ordering from someone online, look to buy multiple comics from them and bundle them uh, so that you save on shipping. You know, spread that shipping cost around. You know, whenever I am buying from someone that I've met online, I'm like, hey, do you have other books that you're looking to sell? Because if they have some that I'm already looking for, well, I'd rather buy three or four books and combine those shipping costs rather than uh, you know, pay $5 every time. Uh, also, when buying from someone, uh, ask them, hey, if I bought more from you, would you give me a discount? And almost always, they, they do. Uh, and so that's what I always do. So you know, if I buy from someone, I'm like, hey, do you have other books? First of all, to say on well, shipping, but then also to say, hey, if you would give me uh, yeah, some kind of discount. Obviously, that would incentivize me to buy more from you. And usually, they're more than happy to give some level of discount. Obviously, they're not just going to give their books away. Uh, but they'd rather have money in their pocket. Uh, and they'd rather be able to do that without investing a lot more time. And so, they're usually very happy uh, to sell those books to you at a, a discounted price. I mean, I would do the same thing on eBay if somebody reaches out to me and they say, hey, if I bought two or three books from you, could you give me some kind of discount? I'd be, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I'd like the money now, bird in the hand, right? And uh, so ask that, but you have not because you ask not. So make sure you ask. And obviously, and you know, I'm always very kind in the way that I ask. I'm like, hey, you know, like, uh, you know, sometimes sellers have given me a discount if I buy multiple books. Would you consider doing so? Uh, so obviously, I would be interested in buying more from you. And if not, that's fine as well. I'll be happy with what I picked up. Uh, but usually, again, they get the discount. And then the other thing, you know, take advantage of best offers on eBay. You know, never, if, if someone is accepting offers, always throw out, obviously, a reasonable offer to them. Uh, you know, every book I have listed, I always, give people the option to make a best offer and I will always accept any kind of reasonable offer you know if I put something on you you know you ask 10% off I'm almost always going to sell you that book because I'm ready to get that money in my hand that I can then use to invest in more books and I'm always surprised I actually had this experience today I just listed yesterday a book for $150 and you know I was leaving some room to negotiate because uh, I was kind of at the top end of what I saw it going for. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll drop down to 125 even if, if somebody buys it from me. And so I had a couple of offers come in for 100 earlier today. And I was planning to get back to them and counter offer, say, hey, can you meet me halfway for 125? But then someone <laughs> just went ahead and sent me, uh, bought, bought it for 150. And I was shocked. Uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, obviously he really wanted the book, but if you'd have thrown out like 140, I would have taken it. So uh, always make sure you're making best offers on books. So anyway, in addition to this book, I'll show off a few more that illustrate some of these tips in action. Uh, so these I all got from one seller. And again, I wanted to bundle some books together to save on shipping and uh, to get a discount. So first of all, uh, this is the book that the seller was 
that I saw for at first, Avengers number 62, which contains the first appearance of M'Baku, who of course is going to be in the Wakanda Forever movie and is a sleeper candidate to be the next Black Panther in the MCU. And so I recently had already picked up a copy, but this is even a higher grade copy. And uh, so I'll look to sell the other one when the movie's getting ready to come out. And, uh, and, and I think this is a, a, you know, a pretty good time to be picking up this book if you want it uh, before the trailer uh, comes out. It's really happy to have it, but when I bought this from him, I then asked, hey, do you have other books you're looking to, to sell? And so he did, and some of them were at a good price. And so some others I picked up was Adventure into Fear, number 19. This contains the first appearance of Howard the Duck. A book that I'm really excited about, Tales to Astonish, number 91. This contains the first cover appearance of The Abomination. And I'm especially excited to get this book because I bought the first appearance in the previous issue last year. And I should have bought this one from the same seller. He had it up. Uh, and I didn't. And someone else ended up getting it before I could come back to it. And so I really... Well, even though it's less valuable, like this cover appearance, much better than the first appearance, just from my own personal collection. Uh, those were, you know, the nicer books. But then I also got some other decent books, some Fantastic Fours, Two Eleven. I've gotten several copies of this, the first appearance of Terax. Love all this cosmic stuff. Fantastic Four number three nineteen. If you watch my videos, you know that I collect Doctor Doom covers. And so I'm really happy to have this one against the Beyonder. And it actually is especially meaningful to me uh, because I had this book as a kid, but it was before I was a Doctor Doom fan. And so I ended up trading it away. And I've always just had in the back of my mind, I really want to pick this book up again someday. And so I finally got it at a good deal. Uh, Fantastic Four 570, which contains the first Council of Reeds. And, uh, yeah, who knows what we're going to see as the Fantastic Four come to the MCU. Uh, also, uh, Balder the Brave, number one. This is a good sleeper book to be picking up that you can probably find in dollar bins. Uh, there's rumor, speculation that he will be in the upcoming Thor movie. And if he is, then this, which is his first solo series, should rise in value a little bit. And then going over to DC, a couple of Batman comics. First of all, Detective Comics number 457, which contains the first appearance of Leslie Tompkins. And then number 463, which contains the first appearance of The Calculator. You know, just a, a fun uh, Batman rogue. And I love to add, always add those to my collection. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, comment below with any tips that you have about you know, comic collecting, uh, investing. I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, you know, it'd be great if you'd consider doing so and helping us grow. Like, comment, all those things that help out with the algorithm. All right, thanks again, and see you in the next one.